Um, initially, this panel was going to focus kind of squarely on social games, and, and it, it kind of will to a point, but when, it, when I was playing out the questions, it, it, it occurred to me increasingly that, that pretty much all mobile games, and most of gaming generally, is, is social uh, now by, by nature. So we're going to make we go uh, a little bit wider. But to kick things off, fantastic. I'm, I've, got, I've got too many things in my hands, you can't do that. No. Yeah, thank you. Let me kick that over with the electrics, that'd be great. So to kick things off, I'm going to uh, allow our panellists to briefly introduce themselves very quickly. Just say who you are, what you do. And I want to, you to tell me as well, this is a challenge you haven't had to prepare for, it's good. Uh, what, what elements do you think are, are most important in, of, to, to encourage social sociality, not socialism, in, in a mobile game? I'm going to leave you to last to think about it. So I thought it out to you, Antebell, right at the start. So what's your, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, um, I'm Antubel Moreda, I'm Head of Product at Flare Games. Um, these days I'm mostly working in the early stages of our publishing process, um, basically evaluating all the game opportunities we have. Um, what do I believe are the most critical components in, in social, in a mobile game? Um, I guess it depends on the game, but definitely uh, communication is an important aspect. Uh, so chat, anything along those lines. Okay. Um, but also, the, the, I think the game needs to provide something for players to be social about. So okay. there needs to be a game motive there. Okay, cool. That's good. Good answer. Uh, over to Aurora in the middle. Can't see behind the hulking frame of Sam Forrest. Hi, my name is Aurora Berg. Uh, I'm a uh, a co-founder at Megacool. Uh, before Megacool, I was part of Dirty Bit. Um, and um, I'm uh, much more focused on the shift of like uh, everyone entering mobile, um, coming from uh, like developing countries that have not had a PC screen before um, to to become familiar with the digital world, um, as well as um, all the like the growth of females uh, on the mobile platform as well. We'll come on to that. Don't worry. We'll bring that in. Sam, over to you. Am I? On? Oh, there you are. You can hear me good. Uh, my name's Sam Forrest. I'm director of communications uh, for Karma Games. Um, you guys have pretty much answered the question for me. Thanks very much. I've got a separate uh, question if you like. I, I know you have. You probably have. I, I'm going to throw. I thought I'd straight out of you, you <laughs> so, you, Sam, Karma Games are obviously, uh, you know, very big in the social kind of casino yep. space. I was doing some research on this because uh, I got some data. Apparently, social casino is worth 3.2 billion US dollars of the games industry at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think once you remove the chance to win money, because well, you know, from the traditional poker and casino, surely social is the core of it. I mean, the casino element is still kind of fun, I guess, but it's, it's all about social. So, you know, what, what can you say, talk a little bit about the kind of user behaviours and the sort of trends you see within your games? Absolutely. I think you're looking at, obviously, when you're looking at social casino games and you're looking at sort of real money games, there's obviously two very different motiva motivations to play. Um, when you're looking at real money, obviously, the motivation is money. You gamble, you win. Very, very simple. But I think when you're looking at social casino, there's a lot more that actually has to be taken into consideration. So, again, looking at the social aspects of it, um, one of the things that we're obviously very, very aware of in Karma Games is building up as much social aspects as we possibly can. And this can be through uh, basically in game messenger, this can be through uh, sending emojis, uh, this can be, again, just through chat. You can set up your own private table for just your friends. So, again, you're know, talking about the multiplayer aspect, you know. That, that sort of covers that area as well. I think one of the big motivations, I think, for social casino players is, is the competition, is competing. You know, we put a lot of uh, tournaments into our games. We were the first uh, social casino company to release multi-table tournaments. Uh, and again, they're, they're hugely, hugely, hugely popular. And it is, I think, maybe bragging rights as well. You know, you can, you can go out there and you say, I have absolutely kicked your ass this week. So again, very, very similar to what we're saying about the, about the multiplayer aspect of it. Yeah. So, so that's, that's good. That kind of segues into my next question anyway, which was, was really about 
uh, multiplayer. Like uh, when we started in the business, everybody wanted to do multiplayer kind of mobile games, but just the, the network, the tech was, was not up to it. It wasn't a, for, for, for synchronous multiplayer anyway. It wasn't just a reality. You can have asynchronous. But, but, and, but you know, mobile PvP really was huge in, don't go too far back. We haven't got the, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't got the insurance. But, um, but mobile PvP was, was huge in, in, in Asia a, a, a year or two ago, and, and it's obviously here here with a vengeance. Obviously, we've we got things like Fortnite and PUBG on one end, and then you've got more casual experience like Hawaii or Guerrero on the other side. So, you you said you were very interested in in PvP and this. How, how do you see how do you see the kind of market evolving? Is this going to be more and more of this? Is there going to be more nuanced uh, forms of, of of this kind of PvP sort of yeah. emerging? So. Um, I believe there are a few aspects to it. I think on, on the one hand, we'll, we'll probably continue to see um, synchronous multiplayer games to grow on mobile, um, but also more diversification. I think you mentioned Fortnite, you mentioned Agario. Um, I think we'll see more experimentation with formats. So, so yeah more diversity in terms of what kind of synchronous multiplayer we see on mobile. Uh, but definitely, once you talk about synchronous multiplayer and things like Fortnite, um, I think community is a big, a big aspect of that. These games need a big community. Um, I think there are some dynamics in, in place where winner takes all, basically. Yeah. So, so the big synchronous multiplayer games will draw in all the players. I don't think there will be many, many uh, successful games in that space. Because you needed such a big install base for that to, to, to work. Do you, have, do you have a view on that? Yeah, we did uh, synchronous multiplayer back in uh, 2012 and cool. uh, made it even work on uh, on Edge. Uh, so I've um, uh, <laughs> been pretty familiar. You're an old hand. You've done this. This is, this is easy. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think from a player perspective, really just expecting there yeah. to be a synchronous multiplayer is, is going to be there. Yeah. Um, like yeah, with uh, with the prefer speaker uh, talking about number of bots and, and everything, I, I think you need to be much more sophisticated. Yeah. Uh, on the like with your bots and yeah. because. Uh, going live, uh, I don't think you can expect to have the user base available sure. to have a good experience. So yeah, so thinking about y your feeling is that there's going to be an expectation from uh, from players that there's just going to be a PvP mode for for, for for most games. And yeah, okay, bots and well, again AI, which is another kind of trend which we're talking about. Um, so segueing on a little bit from that, I, I want to kind of talk touch on on, on kind of esports because that's kind of the, the sort of pinnacle of the PvP. Uh, experience and everybody's very excited about esports always, and it always seems to be this uh, this this uh, growth market. But very hot and exciting. But I, I never, when you see the num the newsy numbers, they never seem to be quite as impressive as as as, as other parts of the industry. Which is, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure where. It feels to me a little bit that esports has become more of a part of the influencer and UA space now. Is is, is that fair, or do you think there's a there's it's, it's a bit I'm not damning the entire esports community? But do you guys have any views on the esports and where that's going? So I think especially as like more hardcore titles enter mobile, um, it's primarily driven by the hardware being available to give you a good experience there. Um, I think from an esports perspective, um, there's not only going to be like the, the traditional hardcore titles that are going to be interesting to watch. I, th I think there's going to be elements of more mid-core titles that are also going to draw an audience. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Um, right. <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry, I'm coughing away from the mic. I coughed into the mic. I did that completely wrong. I sort of looked away and then coughed into the mic. Um, I'm not very well, actually. I've been, I've been quite sick. I went on holiday. That teach me a lesson, won't it? Um, so uh, let's talk a bit about something, the other side of the coin a little bit. We talked about going up to esports and, and people thought nice types of things. What about kind of messenger games? Obviously, that seems the pinnacle of social gaming, you know, you can't get more than being in a social messenger program, sharing game, playing with it. Obviously, you know, back in the day, uh, Zynga kind of birthed a lot of these titles, you know, the Facebook games, um, and, and, you know, at one point I think Zynga was, was the majority of Facebook's revenues for quite, for quite a while, and then obviously mobile came along and changed things a little bit. How, how do you see the, do you see that the new messenger platform as being the next kind of wave of, of social games? Do you think that's something that's going to, you know, again, people are very excited about, but how do you see it? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, we've, we've put um, a, a, basically a number of games actually out on, uh, on Messengers. We're on Viber, we're on Tango. I think, I think Tango had like a million downloads, I think. So we've done, it's, it's doing well. But I think then we're looking at Facebook. I mean, we were the first um, uh, social poker game. Uh, HTML5 poker game to go onto um, their instant platform, instant gaming platform, and obviously VK.com as well. So it's something that we're very, very interested in actually looking at, and it's something where they, I think there's definitely going to be more, more growth as you're going through because obviously the end goal is to bring people over from these significantly huge channels and bring them onto the mobile device as well. Um, I think, I think the most important thing is making sure that any games that you put out on those particular um, platforms are not dumbed down versions of of games that you have already, say, on, on, different, on different platforms. So make sure they're built from the ground up, that they're actually giving, giving the players what they want on that particular platform, and it's not just a, 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 poor, a poor cousin, if you see what I mean. Do you agree with that, Aurora? Or do you have any, any take on what, what it is they should be designed, and what, what elements should be in there? Well, um, I'm not like too into the whole messaging game um, um, sphere, but um, from from what I see, um, it's it's really about like how do you monetize well on that platform, right? Um, to my knowledge, now it's primarily a discovery or distribution channel, right, uh, where you 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 reach your audience through messaging games and then somewhere else, yeah. yeah, and then you move them to your native app. I think, I think Facebook are pretty keen that that's not going to be the end game, and that the, the, there will be monetization methods there already, and people are making some money already. Is it something that, that Flair are kind of looking at or doing um, much with? To be honest, it's not anything we are doing at the moment, but we are watching the space. Uh, personally, I find it quite interesting as well. Yeah. Um, you mentioned synchronous multiplayer being big in China first and then coming to the West, I yeah. think. Uh, in terms of messenger games, is again, we are playing catch-up with Asia. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Kakao and Line were, were, were huge exactly, in this space yeah. for, for a couple um, of years ago. Yeah. I mean, the users are there using those apps. I think the opportunity is there. I, I'm not sure how fast uh, this is going to grow, though. Okay, fair enough. All right, so cautious on that. So, as this is the last kind of talk of the track, we've got plenty of time, um, we're going to cast the net a little wider and, and sort of look at sort of general trends shaping the uh, mobile games industry now and in kind of the next 12 months. Um, so, so, you know, we've talked about uh, sort of hyper-casual. Have we talked about hyper-casual? No. We haven't, sorry. That was... I, my brain is... I'm really struggling. No, but so, we can. We, should we do that? No, I was just saying... We, I was going to say we have another talk going about hyper-casual uh, in, uh, in the uh, Trackman 4 uh, this afternoon. Um, and and it, things like, you know, with Ketchup, Voodoo, Miniclip kind of beforehand and, and, and continually, um, there's been a lot of attention. And this seems to be... was, was cited in a couple of the talks today when I asked people their hottest uh, trends. They said hyper-casual is the thing. Do you, you think that's set to continue? you think it's a fad that all these super quick games that we'll, we'll call, will pass on people? Voodoo have kind of suggested they might be moving to a more mid-course strategy even, which, which seems interesting considering they've made their, their fortune on, on these hyper-casual games. So do you have a view on hyper-casual? I play a lot of them. <laughs> that, that's for the What's start. What's your favourite? What are you playing? Um, Pretty much anything. Um, a lot of the games from Voodoo, Hall, I.O. Um, the latest one I'm playing is from Grand Games. Uh, some farm game. I actually can't remember the name. Hall, I.O. is great. No, I love that. My, <laughs> yeah. both my science also. Um, I mean, it, it's, it has grown a lot in the past year. Um, together with hardcore games, I think it's interesting how the market seems to have had the most growth at, at the extremes. Yeah. Um, that said, I, 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 you mentioned Budu going more into mid-core. I think there's a trend there where uh, hyper-casual games are actually getting more complex. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Considering the status quo, and also not as complex a, as mid-core or hardcore, but complex compared to what they were before. So you think that the hyper-casual is going to naturally kind of evolve in the same way, I guess, casual games did before. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. I, I'm not sure how hardcore it will get, but it will definitely adopt some uh, more complex mechanics from the mid-core space, I think. Is, and, and do you think it's, there's still space? Because obviously we've got developers and publishers looking opportunities here. Is, is, it, is, it, is it too late to enter hyper-casual now? I mean, there's, there's some pretty big players that have grown up pretty quickly. Was it still early on, do we think? I think it's still early on. Yeah, I, I know people that are just starting in that space and seeing some success as well. So, okay. yeah. Cool. Aurora, got any up views on this? Yeah, I'm a big player here as well. Um, what are you playing? 
What? What are you uh, playing? Uh, that uh, like 2048 uh, game by uh, Voodoo uh, okay. with cards. I don't actually, it doesn't really have a good title. Um, and then uh, Love Balls by uh, Line Studios, um, the publishing arm of uh, Applovin. Um, so uh, like, <laughs> I definitely think there's room to grow further. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the game mechanics that are introduced in the hyper casual space is uh, is traditional. Uh, like the, the games have been there, the gameplay have been there before, yeah. but someone has been able to to mo remove more, further friction and just kind of minimize the experience. Yeah, it's like yeah. one game mechanic. Sort yeah, of made and, into whole. and they've also uh, been able to put different marketing behind it. Yeah. Um, so especially like um, I don't know if the Love Balls game actually falls into like hyper casual or if it's casual, but um, like that gameplay have been around for several years. Yeah. But now like with um, with the ability to to really put marketing money behind it uh, and simplifying it further, uh, it's been become much more massive than yeah. uh, the other games before. Cool, cool. Do you have any views on hyper casual? Are yeah. you casual or hyper casual? Well, I'd probably say hyper casual, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I mean, obviously, looking looking at them um, and, and as, as much as I know of them, you know, obviously they are very, very addictive kind of style games. Um, I think the only thing that I would be concerned about is that obviously you, you'd be going through, and once you've completed it, you know, the, well, why would you go back? So I think looking at things like tut um, tournaments and leaderboards and yeah. things along those lines, I think would be quite. Yeah, a, I think that's interesting because they, they do board. tend to churn. I mean, the, the, the principle seems to be there's just you know they, they just keep throwing a lot at the wall and then one stops, churn yeah, and then yeah you're right churn churn through it so, which is interesting like it, it's an interesting viewpoint which is very different to what everybody else has been trying to do which is to get a game that becomes a hobby because i think there's this whole thing in, in gaming where we've moved from browsing or grazing rather just trying lots of things to to hobbies oh finger is that you want to interject on that is that no, go on then so I, I, like one thing, if you look at uh, the Voodoo success and the games that they've been launching, like they they have this um, mantra around like the ability to uh, to understand the gameplay by just like watching someone else play. Yeah. Like um, it has to be that clear. And uh, I, I think uh, like it's it's a natural cause of action for these games to start thinking about like how can we add complexity to make sure that people stick around longer. I, I think there's going to be much more around like. Uh, if you want simplicity, you yeah. can just like leave it at as simple. But um, there's going to be more on the backside of things uh, where you can like get deeper into the game if they want to. Okay, yeah. cool. Go on. You know, can you um, yeah, I just checked the name of the game. It was Merch Farm by Gram Games. Merch Farm. Yeah, I think it's a good example of what we are talking about. If you go back and look at something like Merch Town, yep. it was super simple, but you play something like Merch Farm, and they already have a lot more mechanics in there. There's already a lot more complexity. All right, okay, no, I think, yeah, the, 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 so hyper casual, time to get, it's a, it's, a, it's a good trend, it's a thing to still get involved in, but we'll, we think we'll see a move to, to more, uh, more sophisticated. That was less casual, I don't know. Um, so, uh, completely changing the topic of it, blockchain. We've got uh, this afternoon, two o'clock, we've got a, a blockchain uh, game of Connects, which is a new thing we kind of started this year, in, in, back in March actually, kicking off there. There's a lot of hype around blockchain and crypto generally, and, and some of it's good and some of it's not so good. What, what do you think about blockchain and, and, and games? What's your kind of take? Is it anything you guys are looking at or experimenting with? I know a lot of serious games companies are, uh, you know, either publicly or behind the scenes playing around with it, so... To be honest, I think we'll probably end up using blockchain in finance first before we use it in the games. That okay, <laughs> you're not a blockchain <laughs> enthusiast. That's I, own a, I own a few crypto kitties, so I've been, play, okay. I've been playing blockchain games. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's possible on mobile yet uh, to have that kind of game, uh, but I'm not an expert though. But okay. what I find interesting beyond the technology is uh, some innova innovation in design in blockchain. Yeah. Uh, you look at CryptoKitties, especially in terms of uh, digital scarcity, basically. The, their breathing system is fantastic. It's so <coughs> granular. There's, there's so much granularity in the rarity of those kitties, for instance. Yeah, and we, we're used to that. We've got, econo we've got, obviously, mobile games have economies within them already. We have quite sophisticated economies. So to have, I don't think it's far, too far to have... Uh, you know, a, a, a fixed 
item. That's the, the difference now, and, and maybe the issue with things like loot boxes, skin a box, whatever you call them, is that oh, sorry, games, uh, yeah, is that, 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 that people uh, feel they're getting mined a little bit, and whereas at least if you've got one sword that's yours, you kind of keep hold of it. Um, any views on blockchain? No. Okay. How about you? Yeah, a few. A few. Um, on, okay, then. so uh, we've we finally entered into the uh, crypto and blockchain uh, technologies uh, recently, actually. We announced um, the Karma Games token, um, which is a utility token uh, which uses uh, Ethereum. Um, it's not an ICO or anything along those lines. Um, it's actually, truth be told, it's a, sort of a marketing and promotional tool. Uh, what we are doing is we're giving players the opportunity to buy chips. Okay. Uh, the opportunity to, uh, to buy tokens, which can then be obviously uh, exchanged for chips. Uh, the longer they hold their tokens for, uh, the, they'll get daily bonuses uh, in exchange for holding them. Um, and I think we've worked it out that if they keep them for the full six months, they get more or less, I think it's 11 times the, uh, the equivalent of what they put in at the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's to uh, essentially reward our current players and to bring a whole new set of new players in as well. So at the moment, at the moment we're at closed pre-sale um, and that's looking interesting uh, and then we're about to move into obviously the pre-sale and then open sale after that. Okay, cool. Well, we'll look out for that. Uh, skip away from blockchain, something completely different again. So, um, uh, AR. AR and, and I guess AR on the location base we want to talk about initially because Pokemon Go uh, was a massive success and people said, oh no, that's going to, people get bored of that. When it, as soon as winter comes around it'll be over. Quite the opposite. Is continued to grow and, 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 and do incredibly well. Um, recently, Next Games launched a, a, a AR location-based tile, which did pretty well for them. There's a few others either in the works or coming out. Um, do you think there's going to be more of these, more, more location-based AR games? Any views on AR? That seems like quite a social ex experience. Um, I'm pretty excited about the Harry Potter game yeah. um, by Niantic. Uh, I think they... Uh, like the the fact that Pokemon Go um, like has been out for a couple of years and it, it it took the industry a few years before they were um, following suit um, really shows that there is complexity to it. Um, but you also need a a very familiar IP to go with it um, yeah. to reach the mass audience. Like I don't think um, the that next games have uh, like have reached the full potential yet of of where they can go, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, th I know there's more coming, um, okay. but I, I think it's too soon to know exactly what the space is going to look like okay. going forward. Cool. How about from a flare perspective, is there anything you kind of looked at or considered? Um, so not a lot yet, but we are definitely starting to see more developers pitching this kind of yeah. game to us, uh, so I would expect it to grow as well. Um, especially, yeah, uh, there was Pokemon Go, but now we kind of have some validation after next game's release, The Walking Dead, and we have Jurassic World yeah, Alive Jurassic World, as I well. Got that one. Um, so uh, what about Chuck Go? Chuck Norris Go, is that on the, on the cards? <laughs> um, <laughs> never say never. Oh, okay, <laughs> well, you heard it here first. It's the next one. Chuck Norris is coming, coming to the roundhouse kicking a, to, in, in a, street near you, a street near you. Um, okay, I, I want to... Do you have any? You want to come in on? Not no, 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 not interested in that. There's no poker tables in it. Uh, so, um, uh, one of the sort of issues, uh, well, not issues. One, one of the changes uh, to the games industry is is the growth of kind of female players and and how how that's. It's always been in casual. It's always been a large female audience. But I think we're seeing more and more as games get the industry gets bigger and bigger. We're seeing more and more kind of female players, and we're seeing more and more different types of games. How do you how do we feel that? The, the industry is changing or, or could change or what opportunities are created by a larger number of, of, of female players. I won't say gamers because I don't think they'd see themselves as gamers. I don't know. I don't want to I don't wanna, I don't wanna look just at you. That seems harsh. Um, well, there's... Uh... There's still the like the stereotypical uh, gamer that I know a lot of uh, women don't um, really like, uh, familiarize themselves with. So um, when I when I talk to to fellow women, um, I still can't ask. Right. I, I still can't ask them like, oh, which games do you play? 
um, because they will be like, oh, I don't play games. Uh, I have to ask specifically, uh, which games do you have installed on your phone? Yeah. Uh, and then be like, oh yeah, I have this and this and this, but they don't like think of themselves as a gamer. And I think that's, uh, that's still the, the, like the, the truth for, for the majority of that growth. Uh, yeah. um, and, uh, it's been especially interesting to, to follow the, uh, like all the story-based games. Yeah. Um, and I think that developers working in that space are noticing that the games are being consumed uh, differently than um, a lot of the like stereotypically male games, uh, based games. So uh, there's different, um, different things to figure out uh, when it comes to scaling the audience as well. Um, and you mean specifically for the story-based type games, and the like right. episodes and that sort of that sort of. Yeah. I mean that's yeah that guess again being a, a, a sort of big trend as there's been a lot of these kind of games and 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 also you know dating games things like kind of the Love Island game was interesting yeah. that that kind of did incredibly well. Yeah, I think there's going to be uh, we're going to see more like user-generated content uh, from those platforms and also. Multiplayer aspects, okay. because right now it's it's very much a single player experience. So you think that's a space for for opportunity, really? Because obviously there's a big audience there that don't even consider themselves gamers that are consuming quite avidly and would probably want more of the the same. Yeah, it's very um, like non-social. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. No, that's that's true. We we we're stepping away from social. That's 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 okay. Um, there's a there's a. Um, it's been, it was mentioned earlier how. Um, but I, I would be oh, curious sorry. to hear what you guys said. Yeah, sorry, sorry, it's all about women. I, go on. Um, a, a, well, a, flair, a flair kind of thinking about games targeted at a female audience, particularly. I mean, not as a focus, but is yeah. there, or do you just think make games and who plays plays? I mean, we, we've traditionally been focused mostly on mid core and strategy and RPG games, so yeah. um, those are not really predominantly female audience yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that said, uh, before joining game, uh, Flare Games, I was in PodCup for seven years. Um, PodCup, basically, most of the games, the majority of their audience was female. Yeah, I mean, PodCup made yeah. some incredible games as well. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I definitely see what you're saying. Uh, um, in fact, I believe the last numbers I saw is in the US, the, the female players are now the majority of the gaming audience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a huge audience there. Um, that's opening up opportunities for new kind of games like these narrative-based games. Yeah. Okay. Do you, how about your players? Do you, do you have a large female audience? In, in well, actually, I mean, that's the, that's the thing. When you're looking at, obviously, social casino games and poker, etc., you know, our demographic split was around about 80-20, obviously leaning towards men. Um, and we identified that as, obviously, as an issue within the company in that, you know, there is a untapped audience that we haven't actually gone after yet. Um, and so, uh, after research, we found that, obviously, slots was a really good opportunity to actually approach the female market. And so I think we've now got like four slots games with a lot of other ones being released over the next sort of six or 12 months. And we're seeing a great, a, a, a good success, I think, with that. And obviously a, a very slow but very steady shift, uh, bringing obviously now down to, I think, we're aiming for like 60, 40, I think. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. OK. Um, all right. I, I, skipping back a little bit, the, we, we mentioned, I think you mentioned App Lovin's publishing armor. There, there seems to be a lot more. Um, Developers or ad networks becoming kind of publishers at the moment, which is an interesting, interesting move. I mean, I'm presuming with you know some of them, it's because it's ad. You're getting getting close to the ad impressions for for UA. It make, makes sense. Is that is that a is that a, a desirable thing? Because it's quite hard for developers right now, especially small developers, to get traction. So, is the growth of a new wave of publishers something that's going to continue and is, is good for the industry, or is this kind of a short term thing as people are trying to get onto a sort of UA bandwagon? Um, so, so you're a publisher, Flare, obviously, yeah, you've done that very exactly. Flare Games actually did this exact transition. We started as a developer, and about five years ago, we pivoted to, to publishing. Um, it's not easy. There's a lot to build up, basically. Uh, you cannot do it overnight. It takes time to find the people. It takes time to, to build all the capabilities you need as a publisher. Um, I think at the moment as well, we are... Um, probably, I don't know, if I imagine the market two years from now, 
from now. Uh, I don't think there's going to be room for medium and small size publishers. Basically, there's a lot of consolidation happening. There are going to be mergers. There are going to be acquisitions. Um, so I don't know. Personally, I would say tough thing to get into. <laughs> OK. All right, fair enough. Any, any take on? No, it's OK. Do I have to? I, I don't think I have any like things to add to that. Fine, that's all right. Um, uh, a, a sort of related issue, um, which is kind of a trend, is, or may become a trend, is, is, is alternative forms of distribution. Like, Epic have, have kind of come out and sort of decided to cut Google uh, play out of the equation for distributing kind of Fortnite, which is interesting. Um, do you think this is the, the start of a, of a new trend of people finding other ways around the app stores? There's a lot of people challenging now this 30%, whether that's quite a lot to take now for, 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 for what's actually been being done with these marketplaces. Do you think, no one's going to speak out against the marketplace, so I take that, but do you think there's, there could be more changes in the mobile distribution space? Well, um it's uh, like the the whole app sp app store space uh, is maturing, right? It's been like ten years now, and um, I think it's prone for innovation in itself. And um, like Epic going as drastically as going around the Google Play Store is is definitely a sign that uh, something should happen. Uh, and um, it, like. And they had their own issues doing that, but um, like it's, it's definitely the the path to to making change. And uh, we're probably going to see the stores uh, responding uh, with something uh, as they're being pressured from from alternatives, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay. No, no further. Nobody wants to say anything else about Google or Apple. Fair enough. It's on film. It's all right. They'll never hear. Um, Okay, so we're, we're getting to the last five minutes. Does anybody have a question for, for the panel about any particular trend, anything you've heard earlier, they want to talk about more? Everybody just wants lunch, I can see that. So, so to kind of bring us towards the uh, end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, um, it, what, you know, one or two trends, uh, either in social or generally in the game, that you think are the most, can be most impactful in the next 12 months? And it could be something we have not discussed, it could be something, can, something we have discussed. Um, who wants to go first? Nobody. Go on, Sam, you look, you're looking keen, off you go. What, what, do, you, what do you see, what's going to shape, if you were starting a company now and going, right, I'm going to get on something, um, what, what would be the, the, the area or the space you'd kind of uh, try and latch onto? I think it's still, it's going back to, Obviously, you know the the, the 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 PVP and obviously the whole social aspect of it. I think you know you, when you're looking at any types of games now, I think they must have a such a strong social element to them. Yeah, you know, they must have player interaction. You know, you've got. I said we've uh, our, our portfolio allows anything from sort of solo play right up to obviously playing against yeah. other players. You know, you've got your slots games and things like that as well. But I think you know whenever we do um, you know tournaments and stuff like that, you know, it's it's, it's we just see a lot, so much sort of player interaction, and I think that's that's what's just going to continue to drive this industry. I think you know the the days of someone sitting alone in their bedroom and playing their games is is gone now. You know, I know. I mean, I've got uh, I've got a 12 year old son, and every every sort of Sunday morning he's up playing Fortnite with his mates, and half the time they're not actually playing; they're just chatting away quite happily. And I think it's just it's just the new way. I think that the next generation are actually starting to interact with each other. So yeah, I think the more social elements, the better. So I think. social, fair enough. We're in a social panel. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, I also see that like lately, there's been a shift from uh, like like the the communication, uh, like the social communication happening on on the social media, um, to happening in private messaging channels. Um, like you can debate whether Discord. Uh, and Reddit are a private messaging, or if it's uh, uh, social media, I think it falls somewhere in between. But but all these platforms where um, your your ability to being matched and communicate with like-minded people, uh, where your content um, is is relevant for them, is going to be key. Um, and especially from from our uh, our approach with Megacool, um, like abilities to to play with friends and and having that simplified um, like sharing content uh, like allowing players or friends to opt into your experience is going to be key I think a lot of the trends that you're seeing from PC are gonna uh, transition over to mobile as well yeah cool that, that's interesting 
Um, big finish. <laughs> I think uh, related to the growth of synchronous multiplayer uh, is I'm going to talk a bit about monetization now. Oh, so come on then. I, I'm breaking the whole thing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you need uh, money. Um, no, but I think that uh, cosmetics, vanity items that never have worked particularly well in the West, uh, now they are starting to make more sense and we are seeing Fortnite how they monetize that. Basically, synchronous multiplayer allows people to see the stuff that you are wearing, customizing your character with, so I definitely see growth there. Um, also, a few years ago, we saw how Gacha took basically free-to-play monetization by storm. Um, I think now it's fading out and we see these battle passes. Um, yeah. Basically, anything subscription or sub subscription-like, okay. like a battle pass, an annuity, monthly card, whatever it is I see, grows there, partly also because of the App Store stuff we are talking about, yeah. no? because they offer a better deal for subscribers after a year. Okay, subscribers are very interesting. Okay, cool. I think, I think that's it, really. We're, we're, we're through pretty much to, to one o'clock. So, um, come a round of applause, please, for our panellists. Thank you for, for, for staying around.